That sounds so nice. Bar Brothers. Uh, welcome to the house. How are you guys? Hello, everybody. It's good. Great. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Um, when, when we post the video, you're going to see a really creepy lamp over your shoulder. It's a Christmas story. It's a Christmas story, yeah. Mm. Did you pull it up there? Fragile. Yeah, that's right. You must be Italian. <laughs> um, how are you? How's everything going? Good. A little hoarse this morning, yeah. but, uh, you know, going to get through it. Okay, just it's a rugged performance then. It's rugged. Um, yeah. Lots has changed in your life. Lots has changed in your life, right? Uh, talk about just where your head's at as a band now, collectively. Well, we're um, we're at the beginning of something new. We've been working on uh, some music that has sort of galvanized us and uh, got a new member in the band right now. Um, got uh, some great new sounds coming from everybody. Um, new family members uh, over here, over here. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels pretty good, but it's also like, okay... We're reminded in the last few days that it, you, we're, we're building up our stamina right now. Right. I, I overdid it yesterday, and uh, <laughs> but sometimes that you know can be an advantage. When you when you've been a group for a bunch of years, and you get set to do it again, how do you feel? Are you? Is there any of those questions? Are there those questions? Do we have the songs? Do we have this? Are we ready? Can we pull it off again? Does that ever creep into the consciousness of this group? That that happens every night. Yeah. It does it does like it still feels the same as the the first shows where I I don't think anybody in this band, well maybe me, I would rather be really prepared and comfortable, but nobody else seems to thrive that way. So <laughs> so I I I I glean that that sense off of everybody else that it seems seems to be a band that prefers to constantly put ourselves in a bit of an uncomfortable situation and hope Hope to come out on top. Does that get the best? Like, do you get the best out of yourselves that way? Collect. Do you feel that way? I I don't know that that we are like aware of the alternative. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. so far so good. Um, yeah, but I, I I think one one thing is we've never really had a, a rule book for what we're doing, especially with uh, with the harp and. Mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, I think we we generally like to know i don't like to know too much about what's going to happen uh the whole reason we're here is because i didn't really know what was going to happen you know when we moved to montreal when started playing with sarah when the band started recording first it's kind of like you know if i planned it out or if any of us had planned it out we probably wouldn't be sitting here together so it's like a certain amount of just op being open to the universe and knowing what to do with the things that it throws at you. So let's go back before the move then. Let's go to Rhode Island and the first song you're going to play, which is Newport, right? Is that where it's based essentially? Yeah, yeah. Queens uh, Queens of the Breakers, it's it's uh, re referencing the, the Breakers Mansion in Newport. Andrew and I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, so Newport was just a, a stone's throw. And yeah, we used to get, uh, uh, well, a bunch of us teenagers used to go down there and um, just sort of mess around, kind of provoke people. And, um, Did you dress up in your mom's clothes? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't my mom's clothes, but it was my friend's mom's clothes. Yeah, <clears throat> my mom's clothes were way too conservative. This was my friend's uh, Jewish mother. She had very loud floral outfits, and uh, yeah, I don't know what inspired. I mean, I know what inspired us. We were we were experimenting, you know, um, and we thought uh, you pointed was, to his head. Uh, yeah, I pointed to my head. Um, Wait, how old were you when you were experimenting? Um, but the age, the, the usual age of experimentation. What is it? <laughs> 14, 15? That's a good age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite an age. Yeah, it's... Um, but it's, the song's wistful. The song, when I hear it, the first time I heard it, I thought, I mean, obviously it's 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 rear view mirror -y, but it's to a different time. I mean, that, that mansion, the Vanderbilt mansion, that's a part of America that's really not there anymore. Uh, it was still a hopeful America in, in that respect. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's... I, I never really knew why that became the symbol for that song, but you might have hit on something there. It's... Uh, it is. It's as nostalgic as, as my relationship. America's relationship to the Vanderbilt Mansion is probably as nostalgic as my relationship to those friends at the time. And um, as we were talking earlier, it's kind of when when I had my son, it was it was hard to still figure out what to write about, what was going to inspire me, because uh, suddenly your own ideas about the world are not as interesting as their ideas about the world. And um, but for me, going way back to those friends is sort of solidified something for me i guess but you said it well it's like uh when you what did you say about that i don't remember oh. 
something about how um, the older you get, the the more appreciative you are of those of your early friendships and how they've shaped you. You something you kind of forget about maybe over the course of your life, but when you reach a certain age, you, you kind of realize that these were like seminal relationships. I wouldn't be who I was without those. I think the word used was evaporate. These yeah. things evaporate, right? It's like the most important person in my life. I don't even know where they live anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, you'll hear it all in this beautiful song. Are you ready to play for us? I Thank am. You. Give them a call, by the way. Yeah. Give them a call. <laughs> If it don't come clean And if it won't come sweet, babe If sometimes it comes mean It's like trying to put a fire out With matches and gasoline We've been going around and around Have you really been? You know we were good friends it's funny how we don't talk And I flew over your city last night On a red eye flight from New York I was looking for you down on the ground Wondering if you still remember The way that we just walked around Like the queens of the bigger And I've been making up time I've been following it too And I've been taking advice that I threw off of my youth You should have left it right there where you found it Instead of picking it up You wanted the world but you drowned it At the bottom of the blue It's a wrecking it
Uh, next one we're going to do, should we do Moonshine or Look Before It Changes? I don't know Let's do Moonshiner. <laughs> uh. We're going to do um, the cover song that we had not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Which cover song did you not prepare? <laughs> um, Moonshiner. Oh, right. Yeah, it's a traditional... Uh, I discovered it through Bob Dylan, but uh, and through the uh, Gaslight. the Gaslight tapes. Yeah. But um, I I know they they're sort of hard pressed to f- find its origins, although it's certainly um, Ireland via uh, Appalachian uh, Appalachia or even older. I'm not sure. It's the cla- it goes back to at least when bar rooms were in the co-ed. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, there is that lyric about uh, the women not being able to follow him into the into the bar. Um, that must have been tough. There right, you go. Uh, <clears throat> For the men, I mean, just a bad ratio.
It's amazing that that was just like a, 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 a not even a song that was out there. He just that was just one of the songs he recorded. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's that beautiful. Yeah, um, I was also amazed that that everyone here just uh, jumped on it too. Yeah. That was uh, like we said, uh, we we didn't really know what we were gonna do before we came in. I mean, I'm not amazed. They're all great. We're all <laughs> we've been doing this a long time, yeah. but still, it was sort of like. Uh, Anyway, nice one, guys. <laughs> what is the essence of a great song to you collectively as a, as a band? I'm, I'm the last person to answer that question. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm less interested in songs than anyone else here. What, what, are, you, what are you interested in? I get really obsessed by, by texture yeah. and tone. Yeah, I mean, I'm a harp player, so it's, it's really not about song. I, I think that's the thing that's interesting to me about this project is trying to take those ears and... And, and put them into song, which of course, even even as a classically trained musician, and um, you're always you're always surrounded by by song, and it has so much to do with memory. And this album being partially about looking back and some somewhat nostalgic for me as well. It's it's kind of interesting to to touch those places that aren't necessarily what I tend to explore. Right. But I I mean I think I think. Uh, yeah, from from, I always come at things as an arranger more than a songwriter, and um, it's it's really subtle, but it, there's there's got to be this this warmth of sound that kind of surrounds you. I, it, I'm, I don't really tend to gravitate to things that just come straight at you. Right. You know, there's got to be something that that comes comes from the side and takes you by surprise to to really penetrate. I'd like to hear Morgan Morgan's answer. Yeah. What what makes a great song? Yeah. See, the reason I usually don't talk much is that just useless things come out of my mouth all the time. So it's usually joking and stuff. But yeah. what makes a great song? Yeah. You know, I leave that usually up to really great songwriters because I love making a great song. I guess in a way better by playing behind it. Because every time I try to attempt to write anything, it's never as good as somebody else, you know? But can you identify when you hear a great song, what it is yeah. that makes it work? I don't know. I guess it's a pretty simple thing of lyrics combination with uh, harmonies, yeah. that kind of magical thing like that song we just played. You know, I've never really played that song in my life before, yeah. but it writes itself and it sings itself and it's almost, he could, he was kind of playing with the form of it and it was, it's just easy. And that's usually a sign of a good song when it's, easy to fake or play or remember hmm. yeah. simplicity yeah. Yeah. beautiful yeah. what are you going to play next um, so this is the song we've never um, we've also never attempted this and uh, sort of on um, you well, wrote we, this one on a, on a beach right I wrote it on a beach uh, in Mexico on this the ukulele it's a little it's actually a six string ukulele has doubled strings, um, and in honor of uh, of the the show and sort of some of the requests that came down, we we're gonna do this is a debut song. We've never uh, played it on any other show. We've never actually really ever played it together before. Yeah, we um, appreciate this. And uh, yeah, we've been we've been waiting to play it on something, and this seems like a good opportunity. Um, let me make sure this thing's in tune. Hang on. Uh, yeah, this song is, uh, it's called Look Before It Changes, and um, it's pretty much pretty self-explanatory.
for about a million centuries Just to get up on that shore And not get moved back anymore Mostly I'm just breathing When it changes, it changes the good.